Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask me a question yesterday. Uh, they had asked, is the floor press an accessory movement to the bench press? And that made me realize it's time to brush up on the difference between assistance movements and accessory movements again for you guys. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. All right, what people need to understand, obviously for whatever your goals are, we have primary exercises. And you know, I could say that that's actually a strength and size base for everybody. Uh, in general, if you're just trying to get big and strong, most likely your, your primary movements are gonna be things like the squat, the bench, the deadlift, the press, right? That, that's kind of your big four. Your big four, and I don't care what your, your overall goals are, everyone who's training with weights is probably trying to build a base of some type. And those four exercises will uh, build your base, right? They're gonna build your base. And you would think of those as your primary exercises. Everything else is going to fall under the category, under the category of being either an assistance exercise or an accessory exercise. Uh, and it, honestly, guys, this is just a matter of organizing what you're doing with your training and think of it in terms of where you place it in your training and how you adjust it. That, that's all this comes down to. Uh, but the simplest way to put it, uh, and again, these terms are not really correct, but at least people will get a mindset because people have this idea of what they think powerlifting and bodybuilding is. And actually, there are individual competitive endeavors. We're going to drop that aside. Uh, when you think of assistance movements, you're thinking of performance movements. They're there for a performance element to carry over to your main exercise. So you think of those as, as power lifting type goals, right? They're a performance. They're, they're there to just to make you directly stronger at the main lift. And then accessory movements are more bodybuilder-ish in nature towards your goals. In other words, they're there to put extra muscle on in a place where you think you need it, that you're not getting uh, at the rate that you want out of the primary exercises, right? Does that make sense? Uh, in other words, let's take the bench press. What would be examples of assistance work for a bench press? Because they have a very, very similar movement pattern. They, they address a movement pattern of some type. Uh, what if you're, you're really weak as far as getting a stretch reflex out of the bottom how about a dumbbell press right because you can get a deeper stretch at the bottom a dumbbell press lets you train a similar movement pattern but get a deeper stretch at the bottom so you're adding range of motion with a dumbbell that's the, the reason you use dumbbells right so you can get a deeper stretch at the bottom because the bar hits your chest and you can't go any lower so that's an example how about a floor press training you to remove leg drive and train a bench from a dead stop, a hard stop off the floor instead of a soft stop on the chest. All right, floor press, it's an assistance movement. Maybe a weighted dip, same thing you would do a dumbbell press for, other than you're bringing an extra stabilizing roll in. Those are all uh, assistance movements. Accessory movements would be there to address muscle weaknesses or muscle imbalances. Uh, how about a tricep extension? How about some sort of skull crushers, right? They're there to put meat on your triceps. You would do skull crushers because you say, hey, I need more tricep to facilitate more bench press strength. So you would do that. Um, how about a barbell row? How about a barbell row? Because you need to build more upper, upper and middle back. You need to build more rear delt. You need to bring up those muscles, and some people would say, well, maybe muscle balance reasons, aesthetic reasons, but we could also argue stability reasons. It's not there for a direct performance carryover. It's there to bring up muscles that you need to stabilize the bench press, uh, muscles that you could use to help prevent injury, injuries on the bench press, because again, having a stronger posterior end for an interior dominant exercise like that can actually reduce injury rates. How about a face pull? That would be an accessory movement rear delts, traps, rotator cuffs. It would build all of those things and that would help you reduce your injury rates on the bench press, uh, create better muscle balance, right? And muscle balance is usually there for what? Stability, injury prevention, or, or even aesthetics, you know, because a lot of people who are bench pressing, they're not bench pressing just to get a max bench, they're bench pressing because they want to look a certain way, right? They want to look a certain way. And those exercises help you with that they help you with that let's jump over to something like the squat 
Jump over to the squat. What's an assistance exercise for a squat? How about a front squat? How about a safety bar squat? How about pin squats? Now some people are going to say, what about box squats? I don't think box squats have any place for a raw squat. <laughs> Leave the box squats to guys in suits. Uh, arguable that they can mess up your bar path. They could, they could teach you some bad habits. But, you know, we could, we could count box squats as an assistance movement. They're, they're an assistance movement. Why? Because they share a similar movement pattern. What would be accessories? I don't know. A leg press? They're just to build more leg muscle in theory. I don't think it would carry over well to a squat personally because you need to build back and, and even ratios. But, you know, you could argue that. Okay, fine. Leg press. How about rows again? How about face pulls? Uh, they can help strengthen that ability to keep tight up top. Again, they create more, better muscle balance. Uh, how about your core work? Let's say you do some crunches. Again, that's an accessory. It's an accessory because it doesn't. None of that helps train the squat directly. It doesn't help train the squat directly, but it trains muscles that are used in the squat or used maybe as opposing muscles to a squat. Uh, Any time you you look at them, you need to look at it from that perspective. So. The assistance movements are there to train a movement pattern deficiency or to train a similar movement pattern. You're training them for direct performance carryover, right? Uh, you're, you're sticking with a little closer specificity of training. And again, that's assistance movements and accessory movements are there just to build up muscle in some of your weak places, maybe your weak links somewhere, right? Uh, whether it's an aesthetic weak link, a performance weak link, a stability weak link. That's what you're doing. Okay, uh, deadlift. Deficit deadlift, right? A deficit deadlift, a snatch grip deadlift, those would be assistance movements. Those would be assistance movements. How about, oh, this is an interesting one because these are harder to differentiate. How about a conventional deadlift to bring up your sumo or a sumo deadlift to bring up your conventional? Uh, I think those meet a combination, don't they? Because the movement pattern is very, very different. But, so we could argue they're almost accessory movements, but I'm going to say they're not. They're really assistance movements because it's still a very, very similar thing. Uh, accessory movements could also be like rows. Again, rows, pull-ups, right? They build up the back. They build up the back, which you need a stronger back for the deadlift. Uh, so again, you're addressing muscles. You're addressing muscles. But doesn't have that direct carryover. However, uh, the waters get a little muddy there. What about when we start talking about rows from the floor, pin lay rows, or even those cheat type rows that start off the floor to where you cheat row on the way up, like Keller Willem does? That one's a little harder to differentiate, isn't it? Because you are getting a certain performance uh, carryover, right? It falls back into really almost assistance work, doesn't it? But a power clean. Power clean would be, again, actually an assistance for a deadlift because you're, you're doing a pull from the floor. It's a slightly different variation of the deadlift, but you're doing a, a clean pull from the floor. And, yeah, it does build some of the muscles of the upper back and traps and all that, that stuff also. So people would say, well, that does have an accessory type. But it, it really starts from the floor and you initiate a pull similar to a deadlift. Now, it's a little bit different. But it really, I think it falls back under, that's again a case of an assistance exercise. Uh, how about dead hang chin-ups? How about incline curls? We're going over here to injury prevention on the deadlift. They could reduce the chances of a bicep tear, right? Because they have a stretch involved at the bottom. Uh, training the biceps to handle heavy loads under a stretch can actually reduce your chances of a bicep tear on the deadlift. So we're coming over to accessory movements at that point. So when you start looking at it from that perspective, that, that's the way that we would look at it in defining what an exercise is. And I think it's important for you to understand why you are doing an exercise, right? If you're adding any exercise to your training, it shouldn't be random. It should be there to address something. Because what people need to remember, it doesn't matter what your goals are, whether they are physique related or performance related, you're still always training for performance because you have to get muscularly stronger in order to get bigger as a general rule. You just have to, whether you're talking about strength stamina or you're talking about maximum strength, because again, that's where rep ranges get involved. 
but you have to improve overload. And so you've got to address your strength deficiencies on your big movements if you even want to gain muscle correctly. If you want to gain muscle maximally, that is what you have to do. And so again, all we're doing is organizing these exercises and figuring out what you're doing with each exercise, why it's in the program, how it carries over to the big picture as far as improving your overall balance, your overall performance, things like that. Uh, so again, there's always a lot of confusion out there when people are trying to figure out what an exercise is. Why, whether it's a, is it an assistance movement, is it an accessory movement, what's it doing in my program? And all this is is just words that we use to organize why we do an exercise, right? And it's just that simple. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.